Hey everyone, today we're going to go through a quick introduction of corporate structure and look at the different types of business ownerships that exist as well as some of the key personnel involved in these organizations. So first up, there's some terminology that you'll need to familiarize yourself with and it's really important that you understand the distinction between ownership and control. So let's look at an example that we can explain this with. So let's say I bought 200 Woolworths shares on the Australian Stock Exchange. Now when you purchase shares, you are purchasing ownership of that company, whether that's big or small. So that would mean that I would have ownership of the company. But when we look at control of the company, I would not have any control over how the business actually operates. And whilst I do have certain entitlements as being an owner, such as receiving dividends, which are company profits redistributed to shareholders, I don't actually have a say in how the business conducts its operations, and I can't influence that. Now, if we wanted an example of someone who controls the company, then a good example would be the CEO. CEO has a direct say in how the business conducts their operations on a day-to-day -day basis. And often is the case, the CEO can have part ownership, so be an owner, as well as control. So they can fit into both those categories. Now let's move on and take a look at the distinction between these two terms, personal liability and limited liability. Let's go back to our Woolworths example. Say I purchased $6,000 worth of shares. So I got 200 shares for $6,000, in which case I'm a sucker because Woolworths share price has dramatically dropped. And say it was to continue to drop and eventually uh, Woolworths would declare bankruptcy, I would have limited liability meaning that the only amount that I would lose is the $6,000 I invested in Woolworths. I wouldn't have to forego my own money outside of that and some of my assets in order to pay for that. I would only lose the $6,000 that I invested. On the other hand, let's say there's a small business owner who runs their own cafe. They would have personal liability. And if they were to go bankrupt, they may need to sell their car or their house in order to meet these financial commitments and obligations if they don't have the funds readily available. Now, let's have a look at the types of businesses that you can set up. The first thing we're going to look at is a sole trader. Let's look at Anna, who is a small business owner and she runs her own hair salon. So, if we look at some of the characteristics of a sole trader, and look at Anna's example, Anna owns and controls the entire business. She is also, also personally liable. So she has personal liability if the firm goes bankrupt. So she'll have to pay for those debts with her own money and her own assets. Not trying to be a negative Nancy, but if she were to pass away, more often than not, the business will cease to exist. It will close down. And lastly, she is taxed at a personal tax level. So you can be taxed at your personal tax level or a company tax level. However, sole traders are always taxed at a personal tax level. So one of the tasks I'd like for you guys to do and to come prepared to discuss is to think about whether being charged personal tax is an advantage or whether it is a disadvantage for Anna in this scenario. Now let's move on to partnerships. So let's say there's two brilliant entrepreneurial students who have the next idea for the big app, like Snapchat and Facebook. They would not launch their company as a sole trader because there are two of them and they most likely would both want to have 50% of the company. Now, there are two types of partners. So there are both 
general partners and limited partners. So let's have a look at the distinctions between the two. So the characteristics that describe a general partner, firstly, is ownership of the company, control of the company, and personal liability. On the other hand, if we look at limited partners, whilst they also do have ownership, the differences occur in the level of control and liability. So for our partners here, for limited partners, they have no control and also limited liability. So if we were to go back to our Woolworths example, would that be an example of a general um, partner or a limited partner? If you guess right, that would be a limited partner because you own the company but you have no control and you have limited liability. But what about our two brilliant entrepreneurial students? Well, for them, they would be general partners because they have ownership of the company, control of the company, and if the company does go bankrupt, they are personally liable and have to pay for these with their own assets. So, moving on, let's look at the corporate structure of corporations. Now, corporations are a bit more bureaucratic and there's a lot more levels of management involved. So, first up, we're going to look at the board of directors. Now, the board of directors sit right at the top of the organization. Their role is to set and monitor the high-level strategy of the company. But another big part of their role is that they monitor the performance of the CEO. So they can hire and fire the CEO. So, looking at the CEO, let's look at Mark Zuckerberg, CEO of Facebook. Mark's role is to carry out the strategy set out by the board of directors and to conduct the business operations on a day-to-day -day basis. But he needs to ensure that he performs, otherwise he may get fired by the board of directors if he is not performing well, and they can hire a new CEO. Right under Mark would be the chief financial officer, and they are solely responsible for the investment decisions of the firm and evaluating the finance decisions of a firm. The one big thing in common between all these people is that they want to make the firm as valuable as possible. All of these people here want to ensure that Facebook is the biggest success possible. So that is their common goal. So over here, we've actually left some of these out. And one of the tasks I'd like for you guys to do is to think about what some of these positions might be. So next to the CFO and underneath the CEO. Now, I'd like for you guys to go through some of the features of a corporation in your own time over here, as well as agency costs and the advantages and disadvantages of corporations. We will discuss those in class, but I wanted to quickly touch on uh, this diagram here. This is a really important diagram which shows the differences between all different types of ownership. So we have sole trader, partnership, and then moving on, limited partnership and corporation. And it distinguishes them between the characteristics of the type of owner, the number of owners, the level of control, liability, as well as taxation levels. And a lot of multiple choice questions for the final exam come from this table, so it's really important that you understand this. And last up, we're going to look at the two primary responsibilities of the financial manager. These are the core fundamental components of finance and is the major focus for this semester and for this course. So the two different roles can be split up into these. So there's firstly an investment decision. So which projects should the firm invest in? Once that's been decided, we look at how they're going to actually fund these projects. It seems quite simple to think about, but these two components are at the absolute core of a financial manager and really important to know and to remember for this course. So thanks, guys. Don't forget to come prepared with some examples and questions for the things we discussed uh, in class, and I will see you in class.